Hello and welcome to another edition of the OC Varsity Gridiron Show Week 7. We're here in the Orange County Register studio slash office. I am freelance video journalist Jonathan Camus being joined by Dan Albano to my left and Steve Fryer to my right. Guys, we'll kick it off right away with the game of the week, which we have 6-0 Capistrano Valley at 7-0 Mission Viejo. Number two ranked Mission Viejo, head of Jay Sarah, but that's a story for another day. Capo last played two weeks ago, guys. They blanked Cypress 35 to nothing. Meanwhile, Mission just keeps turning it on. They beat El Toro 70 to nothing. They were up 56 nothing at the half. And also, Dan, they got a recruit. They got a commitment from a guy that we really like, Mr. Arnold. Yeah, Kikili has picked up two uh, Pac-12 offers uh, recently, and, and all by his uh, his play. And he's going to be a big part of, of this uh, matchup because the strength of Capo Valley is Nathan Manning. That a pass attack with uh, you know uh, you know was it uh, Meyer, Morgan, uh, Haley? That three you know three great receivers, and then you got Achille Arnold at the, in the secondary at safety with guys like JoJo Forrest. Woolard. So that's really a big part of that matchup today, uh, this week in this game. Okay, Steve, the Cougars, they haven't given up more than 14 points a game this season, but this is their first game in South Coast League play. And as we all know, it's one of the better leagues in Southern California. Yeah, it's a great league. You know, um, El Toro got beat 70 nothing, but they're still pretty darn good. I saw them play. Um, the key to this game for me is uh, Michigan's I'm picking them to win this game. I think what they need to do is they need to put a lot of pressure on Manning. Got that wonderful back group back there behind, you know, the defensive backfield. Going to cover guys pretty good. But if you give Manning enough time, you know, those guys are going to, you know, wiggle the way you're open. So I think what Mission's got to do, Lance Kennelly and company, got to put a lot of pressure on Manning, get him out of his comfort zone. And I think that'll stop the uh, Capistrano Valley off. And not stop it, but keep it manageable. And then, you know, with Joey Yellen and company, Mission can score points too. So I think Mission will win this game. Guys, our next game, 4-2, and two, Orange Lutheran. They are 1-0 and oh in league play. They are at 6-0, and 1-0, oh, and oh, St. John Bosco. Guys, last week, Orange Lutheran beat Santa Margarita 39-37. It was a last-second field goal by Logan Loya. But they are on the road against St. John Bosco. Who? Beat Jay Sarah last week, 35-28. Dan. Well, you know, the speaking of the of the Bosco's win, I was uh, I thought that was uh, a credit to Jay Sarah for playing that well, but I also it showed that Bosco really hasn't uh, found its stride completely yet. Um, I think there's there's somewhat soft schedule. Didn't ha really have them ready the way Jay Sarah was ready after playing a tougher uh, non league schedule. That said, I think you know for the Braves, I mean they you know. They didn't pass the ball very impressively. DJ was uh, nine for twenty passing, so they're going to be looking to do that against the Lancers, get their pass attack. But the, you know, the big thing for the Lancers is you know Steve and I were at that game, you know, that great game against Santa Margarita. You know, it was a gut check game, a character game for 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 Orange Lutheran because they don't have Kyle Ford who's out for the year. They probably don't have Reggie Strong who's out for the year. Um, a lot of you know adversity is hitting the team. But if they, they they were encouraged that they could get that win, then they would continue to fight. And they would have that character, and that's what they're going to have to do and stay positive and fight. I'm picking the Braves to win, but at least they're going to have that, you know, the Lancers will have that fighting spirit. Halinski was awesome. Four touchdowns passing, but this is St. John Bosco in their new house. Yeah, uh, I think something that you talked about was a Bosco schedule. And at halftime of the game against Jay Sarah, Coach Jason Negro of the Bosco Braves addressed that very thing. You know, he goes, this is what it's like, fellas. This is what the Trinity League is going to be like the rest of the way. Jay Sarah is very good. In my opinion, the best team Jay Sarah has ever had on the football field. Um, that all being said, I really like St. John Bosco a lot in this game. You know, everybody's excited about the great quarterback, DJ Ugalele, but they run the ball well. George Halina, the four touchdowns last week. And I think defensively, a little bit of good edge speed on, uh, you know, may make Helensky move around, who, you know, rolls out and throws pretty good. Uh, even though he's such a big dude, you know. But uh, I think, that, again, you know, putting pressure on the passer is going to help uh, Bosco get a W. Dan, your prediction. Yeah, I'm also picking uh, St. John Bosco. Okay, finally, guys, uh, this is a freeway league game. This is 5-1 and one, Sunny Hills. They are at 2-4 and four, La Habra. The Lancers blanked Buena Park last week, 28-0. Their quarterback, Luke Duxbury, had three touchdown passing. Uh, the Highlanders beat Fullerton. Uh, they walloped them 47-3. Guys, uh, we kind of know the class of the freeway league is La Habra, but will Sunny Hills give them their best test, Dan? Yeah, I think Sunny Hills is probably the second best team uh, in the league. 
But uh, you know the, the Highlanders are my fa- you know my pick to win this game, and they're just not a very happy group this time of year because they they play such a tough non-league schedule, playing Mission Viejo, who we talked about, Upland, um, you know Redlands, East Valley, Calabasas. So this is their time to um, start to uh, get their record back uh, where somewhat where they want it. So you know some interesting matchup, you know, because you you know I look at I like Ray Peace is a uh, Division One type recruit for the Lancers who uh, can play uh, defensive back and receiver. And maybe that's an exciting matchup with another guy, uh, Junior Clark Phillips, who's also a big time yeah. division one recruit. The Lancers just haven't you know, faced this competition, but uh, they also have to stay positive and uh, you know, keep working toward their goals in, in the freeway league. Another athlete that La Habra has, Jamil Hennig. He was injured last week, but who stepped up? Steve, Ryan Loudon, two rushing touchdowns. So one guy goes down for the Highlanders. Hey, they got another guy who's just as good as him on the bench or willing to step up. Steve, um, your thoughts on this one as Sunny Hill's off to a great start. But La Habra, oof. They're always good. Yeah, I really like what Dan said about the Highlanders being a little bit unhappy. You don't want, you know, and they're going to take it out on somebody, right? If they're not happy and who well, wants they, to play? They did last of, week. Who wants to play a bunch of angry Highlanders, man? Not me. Uh, I think of this game, a lot of it's going to come down to what happens in the interior line play right there, where I think La Habra is going to be able to uh, take control of the game right there. Sunny Hills, I saw them play, and I know you have too, Dan. I am totally impressed. I really like Duxbury, the quarterback, and, and the whole group. And I thought they weren't going to be as good as they were last year. I think they're better than they were last year. Unbelievable. Yeah, eight know, wins last they year. They got it going on over there at Sunny Hills. That's awful fun to see. But I think there's still, you know, Sunny Hills here and uh, La Habra here. And uh, there's going to be that gap still. And that's nothing against Sunny oh, Hills. God, that's no, just. Like I said, they're, that's the best that's, team. And they play with a lot of fire. And, and you know, I, I loved watching them play. They're going to be really good in their playoff division too, Dan. But uh, but still, La Habra is you know like you say, class of the league. La Habra is La Habra. It's as yeah. simple as we can say it. They have a lot of talented juniors, but you know so does La Habra because you know Clark Phillips is a junior, Zanelli is a junior too. So it's not like La Habra's. You know they got some young talent on that team too. So, but it's tough being in the same league. But it's you know. Um, you know, it's good for uh, Sunny Hills to have, you know, somebody to keep, uh, you know, to try to push each other, They'll, you know, bring up the competition. Finally, we'll go to our viewer question. This one comes from David Andrade. He says, what is your prediction for Orange high school football this season? He means uh, the high school team, Orange, yeah. not everybody, Steve. <laughs> what do you think of the Panthers? I, know, I misread that. I go, wow, yeah, that I know. time we got. <laughs> what do you think of the Panthers, Steve? Well, I think they're really good. I saw them play uh, a couple few weeks ago, and man, they are solid. And they play mean, and they play together, and I really like that group. Now, they play Santa Ana, right, in the final week of the regular season, Dan? That's going to be for the Orange Coast League Championship, right? That's going to be a great game. So I, I really like Orange. Uh, you know, Santa Ana, you know, has picked up uh, an additional player who just got eligible, uh, Patrick McMorris. And so that adds uh, a lot of uh, a lot of offensive ammo to them. But, um, man, I really like the way Orange plays. I like their style. Coach Pedroza, quarterback Pedroza. Uh, good team, yeah. No relation. If you're if you're enjoying Orange football, you're gonna you're gonna be enjoying them for a f- couple or few weeks into the playoffs. CIF champions. Yeah, week ten is uh, is uh, is gonna be awesome because uh, you know there you know there's some possibly some really great matchups, and that's gonna be one of them. You know, I haven't seen Orange. I know they're doing some good things. Um, you know, uh, there's they have an outside rusher, uh, Sun, who's really racking up a lot of uh, sacks. I think he's in double digits. But that I you know that addition of Patrick Morris is a whole new dimension for Santa Ana where they can pair him with with uh, Drew uh, Ramirez. You know, the quarterback has been very sound. They're passing it better. Uh, uh, La Viva, uh, La Vera, um, I, I really, you know, that outstanding um, uh, tight end and defensive end, um, he, he's, he's a beast. And I'd give the advantage to Santa Ana, and I would expect them to uh, win uh, Week 10. But, you know, I, I know Orange is going to give them, you know, everything they can handle. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to see all these teams yep. down the stretch, guys. Week ten's gonna be great. Yeah, final shout out to San Clemente High School. I will be there for an all access video look this Friday night at their homecoming parade and homecoming game as they play El Toro. So we'll see you at the games this weekend, oh, Steve. P- p- poor Chargers are the homecoming game. <laughs> nice the- plug. Yeah. Oh, Dan's Trinity League podcast too. I yeah, we we gotta too. plug that. Steve, is there anything you need to plug I- before be we go? At, I'll be at, I'll be at Home Depot uh, looking for winter vegetables. I thought you were talking about going to another Chargers game. Um, That was StubHub Center. I went there Sunday. Yeah, I'll be there Sunday too. All right, guys. Thank you for watching.